So this session, with, which is short, one hour, but important, is dedicated to companies and partner, partner of this event who developed a market solution for researchers. So the first speaker is Marcus Garstreich from Biosolvite, who sells some very user-friendly <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's true, solutions for drug discovery. And I think I have only friends here. <laughs> uh, and I think we had an, a nice introduction this morning to chemical space. And I think Marcus will also talk about this. Merci, Esther. Thank you so much. So we have to run, yeah? I'm rushing you guys now through these slides, and uh, I don't even care whether you understand everything. No. Why everybody speaks about chemical spaces? So not so sure whether you are aware of that, but we are very much aware of that because uh, many, many, many people now ask, how can we navigate those super big spaces that Matthias already kindly introduced you um, with using fragments, building up something um, along reaction possibilities. So I would like to give you a biased perspective from the perspective of our company. Now that Matthias has explained everything so beautiful, why is it relevant, especially in the industry? Three things, IP. IP, for those of you who do not know what that means, IP is intellectual property. So that means companies would like to patent things and they would like to own something for, for a while so they can make money with that. The second thing why it's very important is certainly time. So the, the time is money. And that's, uh, that leads me already to the third thing. These two are intertwined. Time and money is clear. The more you save, the quicker you are, the better for the market. So. Uh, we need to actually find quickly stuff that we can, ideally we do green computing, so that means we do not consume a lot of energy, ideally, ideally, and in the end we have synthetically accessible results, we had this before, and even better if we target directly novel IP space, so space where we can patent stuff. So first question out of three regarding the IP, is a bigger chemical space better than a small chemical space? Hmm. We don't know yet, but there are several hints on that. So if you imagine this being a, a haystack, then you would ask, um, if I increase the haystack, will I also increase the probability of finding more actives? Everything that we see so far and read so far points to that fact. So here is, and I will have many of those presentations from other people, and you will recognize that this is not my own stuff by this little shadow host. So here, these are slides from somebody else. This is Christoph Grebner, formerly with AstraZeneca. They evaluated a 10 to the 15th sized space by subchunks. So they, they used sub parts of this and looked at the number of fits that they found in a retrospective study. And you see that on a log scale of the number of fits retrieved, you will see a linear behavior. So yeah, that points to the fact that likely, yes, from this very study, it looks as if, if we increase the haystack, we get more golden needles. Here's a recent paper that has uh, gained a lot of attention in Nature 2019 from the Scheuchert group, um, and that had an ed editorial introduction, bigger is better in virtual screening, ultra large library docking for discovering new chemotypes. And also they modeled the distribution um, with, uh, with respect to finding actives uh, at given thresholds for docking energies, another type, type um, of hint into that direction. But don't bigger and bigger spaces then overlap, even if we increase the haystacks, don't we overlap? And thankfully, Matthias already introduced a space compare, which is a tool that allows these huge, super huge stairs to be compared with very, very small numbers emerging. Two papers on this. The first one was a, um, a linearized enumerated way of accessing sub chunks of these big spaces. And now with Louis Spellman's work, we can actually quantify these things. Now I will take you through a bunch of application examples here and there. Imagine you had a fragment in a binding pocket. So something like this, you guys see my mouse, yes. So you had a fragment. Then what we can do in, uh, in 2D space or in coordinate free space means if we have a fragment, which is for example, an acyl chloride, then we can write up the reactions that an acyl chloride can undergo and we can connect those that are meaningful. So we can connect a green Lego block to a blue Lego block if that's chemically sound and reasonable. And if we do this um, in a systematic way, we can write up something like a compatibility matrix. Yeah? So here it's stored who can react with what. And even in a pocket, we could then start from a fragment, check 
for the functionalization that we have. So for example, a blue Lego block, which might be an acyl chloride or something less reactive that is in the pocket. And we could then connect what's chemically meaningful. So we can connect something like here. We see, ah, it's clashing, or we can connect something there. Ah, that works okay. Or we, we see that the next exit vector will slam into the wall. So we have a relatively easy means of filtering things out and we can go all the way 3D from a fragment binder that we can use. And if we do this with the reactions and building blocks that are encoded by companies such as Enamine with their real space concept, then we arrive by definition of the algorithm of very, very highly synthetically accessible molecules. That's the idea. We did this in collaboration with uh, the uh, Klebe group and uh, Crystals First, a spin-off of uh, uh, Gerhard Klebe's group in Marburg. And we used the fragment here in the pocket we confirmed first, will the computer find that fragment binding back? And that was very, very stable. So we got a very good RMSD with this fragment binding. And then we searched 2 billion possibilities according to the, the applicable chemistry. And we came out with almost 70 actives, actives in the definition of being better than 500 micromolar binding. Six x-rays could be obtained very quickly and the best binder was high nanomolar. But look at this, nine weeks in total. Yeah? So very, very fast. And the synthesis was also very, very fast because the concept behind was in collaboration with Enamine. So they directly got the, got the 70 um, compounds to synthesize and they rapidly delivered this back. The paper is currently uh, in submission. And uh, the decisive part is to allow a little bit of fuzziness here in this respect. So we do not only superimpose exactly those fragments. Sometimes you may not have a fragment like this in your Synthon library. So you will have to take the next best possibility. So there is some kind of fuzzy matching in between. You can score select and then uh, have another round of filtering when you connect the next one and emerge with these uh, results. Ceci n'est pas un funnel. So um, that's what's different about the, the shape of this workflow here. So typically when you see these graphs, so you go from top to bottom, um, you will see lots of tons of many, many molecules and they get less and less and less and less and less and fewer and fewer. And, and in the end, you have a few compounds that you test and that you hopefully, hopefully find active. In this concept though, it's kind of the chemical space blows it up intermediately and then it shrinks back together. And um, I will have a bit more of information on what this actually means for the, for the hit finding procedure. Uh, please be aware by definition of this concept with the chemical compatibility, the chemistry awareness, this does not discard any molecules a priori. So any molecule which is a member, a formal member of this chemical space can be a hit. Yeah? So there is no truncation or pre-filtering or something like this. It's only the chemistry that determines things. Point two, money, money, money. The combinatorial exploitation of the things makes things much cheaper. That's not only true for the virtual part, but it's also true for the for the lab work. So let's look at this enumeration. Uh, shortly before I married, there was a Vogue mariage or something like this, uh, where on the last page, there was a one pager how to blow the budget. So if you still had budget for your marriage, there were proposals, you know, buy something like a diamond plated handbag or whatever it is. So enumeration, how to blow the budget. Look at these figures. So if we go 10 to the ninth and we now um, operate on something which is not so brute force anymore, there are references down here and I'm happy to share the slides. of course. You see how much RUM you need. Yeah, So you're in the 250s RUM roughly for 10 to the ninth molecules if you do 2D similarity computation with enumerated libraries. So where all the molecules are explicitly there. Substructure searching, quite a bit of RUM, 10 to the 10th. There is a conversion step needed for 3D work where you go from 2D to 3D. 2,900 uh, GPUs were used that in, the, in that exercise down here and so on and so forth. But it gets really hot and almost prohibitively red and not very green, to be honest. And we all need to be aware of green computing. Uh, we should at least. And, um, and I have a few more uh, of these figures uh, that are behind on this slide here. And take a look at the memory consumption, conformate generation, the cost a quarter of a million dollars were requested in this uh, workshop here from OpenEye to actually conduct these doc dockings. Yeah? And I'm not in the position to comment their pricing, but it's a lot of effort. That's the point that I would like to get over here. So very, very, very expensive. The lab work, and these are numbers that I had from personal interviews with people. I asked seasoned medicinal chemists and uh, head, of, head of departments, how much do you pay for a, for a 
for a, a compound that you would like to have synthesized. And they said, well, if you have it synthesized in California, it's around three to four thousand yeah, dollars, a custom synthesis for one molecule. Um, in Europe, we'll range around two thousand, so a little cheaper, but same ballpark figure. Here is Ukraine. Yeah? Yeah. We're talking now Ottawa, Enami, real space, etc. We are in the a few hundreds, and in China, it's also a few hundreds. Yeah, so there is a huge error bar. I only have these values by hearsay, but there will be definitely quite a bit of truth to that. So not only virtual is way, way more cheaper, but also wet lab is way, way more cheaper when you exploit the chemistry aware combinatorial behavior of things. Three, time. Well, closely related to what you've seen before, but if we do clever algorithms, then we can arrive at something which is orders of magnitude faster. So here, for example, an early exercise uh, that I did with uh, Franca a little while ago in collaboration with Inamin. We had an SD reader and we had some, it's in quotation mark, actives. They were hardly active. They weren't really, really active. And um, when, you're in, when you're in such a situation, you'd rather want to search with a fuzzy similarity. You would want to throw out your, your net uh, to, to get the fish uh, with a long rope in between it, not the close by obvious analogs. So we used feature trees and we did a chemical space search and then only we docked the top of the cream of this chemical space search and we uh, looked at this visual inspection and within just a few weeks six weeks roughly uh, we found new ip in these sar by space ex uh, exercises here that we that we had also published um, we recently two two and a bit more weeks ago we had hosted the uh, drug space symposium that was a virtual symposium that we did with uh, with 600 subscribers and uh, soon the recordings will all be available hopefully we are still waiting for a few okays from people uh, that talked but Xavi Baril from uh, Barcelona was talking about an exercise so traditionally he would collect big libraries filter them cluster and dock uh, or do, well, dynamic undocking them and the idea would be that he pulls purchasable molecules directly according to a substructure match so recall Matthias was talking about space max so that's a tool with which you can ask a chemical space, hey, I have this part of a fragment or I have this molecule or something like this, pull me out of a huge, huge space, all those out that share this substructure. And that's what Chavi did. And he did this in, in a breathtakingly fast manner here. And he said um, in this talk, uh, and we have, I think we have this okay already, so these slides should be up on the website very soon, 1,000 times faster than brute force docking. So he did uh, 20 million uh, query runs with this and was able to actually complete these searches within just a few hours later. So the real space, um, I mentioned this before, these guys deliver. So if it's about synthetic accessibility, you see these rates here, they really range up to 90% delivery rates when they ordered the compounds. And here are the results. Remarkably, I, I have to rush through these slides. Um, the uh, computational fragment sits, so you read this from uh, bottom to the top, uh, they emerge with a relatively high hit rate um, as opposed to when they took parts of out of drug candidates for the BRD4 target that they actually used. So stunning hit rates there. Um, here is the next exercise, fast grow. Fast grow is, um, is a fast growing tool to let you explore the pockets in a very time efficient manner. I have a slide on the, on the algorithmic idea in a second. But the idea is here, again, you have a fragment hit, for example, and instead of just using one vector to explore a pocket, you just systematically explore all pockets because you can because the time is, um, is enough, is sufficient that you actually do this. So that's what, uh, what AppV did with the pre-release of the software. They put this here and you see what this, what this gives. Yeah? So you have your fragment binding here and all those here, they are grown poses within the pocket. And then you could do MMGSA or something like that with it and score them and get out with solutions. Just the uh, super fast growing idea, what we do is um, uh, we discretize the rotations that we, uh, you know, when you connect two fragments to each other, you would have to rotate, probe the rotations, and we can discretize this, obviously. But instead of using a rotation operation, a rotation matrix to be multiplied with the uh, uh, coordinate vectors of your atoms, um, Patrick Penner in, in Matthias's lab came to the idea to just do bit shifting, you know, and then every bit shift corresponds to an angle of x degrees. And that way makes it so super fast. And, um, and again, 
3 million fragments explored in just two hours was totally unthinkable of before. Yeah? And, uh, and what comes out is actually uh, active in the end very quickly. So before that used cloud computing weeks of time and now within hours, literally, they can explore things in the pocket with purchasable building blocks and arrived at pretty active uh, molecules there. Talking untruncated spaces, I had this before. And um, we could also do this with an empty pocket, as opposed to the fragment that I showed you in the beginning. Yeah, why not? We use the same trick, compatibility matrix. And if we pour in the uh, synthetically accessible chemical space, such as uh, the galaxy space, or some call it galaxy uh, by now, because it alludes to Wuxi, uh, or in, I mean, real space, etc., then you arrive at um, purchasable molecules. This is what Genentech and us did in a joint collaboration. And they were totally thrilled because uh, what they got out there was again highly active molecules that occupied not only one part of the pocket, but that really uh, covered the pocket as you would expect from a proper docking. So chemical space docking, as we call this, that is green computing. It's currently in review this paper with uh, Genentech, but take a look. So here um, there are various um, exercises and assumptions or curves for docking times if you need n seconds for something like a docking. But the chemical space docking is down here because we simply exploit the combinatorics of the nature. Yeah? The, the idea itself is not rocket science, but you would have to implement it in a proper way to make it actually work and collaborate with the wet chemistry guys who did a great job in actually um, writing everything into their proper elands. And uh, Esther, one minute to go. Uh, I think that's it, yeah. So um, hopefully I could get over a little bit of this fascination that the industry currently shares with these super big spaces. We can go reaction-driven, chemistry-aware, and, um, and almost all the big farmers are jumping currently at this idea. Notably, also, there is this dedicated freedom space that has been written up with uh, in collaboration with ChemSpace, which is made uh, during the Ukrainian war times um, uh, uh, with a strong focus on actual uh, synthetic accessibility. Merci. Thank you. <laughs>